His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa returned home today after an official visit to the United Kingdom in which His Majesty met with Her Majesty Elizabeth II, the Queen of the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland and Head of the Commonwealth and British Prime Minister Theresa May. During the visit, His Majesty reviewed the Bahraini-British friendly relations and ways to develop and reinforce bilateral cooperation in all fields. They discussed a number of regional and international issues of interest to the two nations. His Majesty King Hamad then visited the United Arab Emirates to meet with UAE Vice President, Prime Minister and Dubai ruler Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum and Crown Prince of Abu Dhabi and Deputy Supreme Commander of the UAE Armed Forces Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nahyan. Their Highnesses reviewed the deep-rooted relations between Bahrain and the UAE and discussed ways to further develop coordination regarding various current issues and developments in order to meet the best interests and stability of the two countries and the two brotherly people. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister received Al Ghadibiya Palace today, Council of Representatives Speaker Ahmed bin Ibrahim Al Mullah, Shura Council Speaker Ali bin Saleh Al Saleh, a number of the Council's members and state officials. He expressed his pride in the strategic partnership between the government and the parliament. His Royal Highness affirmed the importance of the legislative authorities and members' role on the local and regional level. In the light of their endeavors to create a robust relations with international parliaments, which in turn would strengthen the kingdom's relations with the other countries. The MPs congratulated His Royal Highness for receiving the Grand Star in Gold of the Austrian Order of Merit from the Royal Habsburg family and Hollenbrook City Council in Austria, in appreciation for his efforts in protecting societies and his dedication in supporting peace and humanitarian charity activities. The representatives and Shura Council speaker and members praised his. Royal Highness's keen efforts of maintaining peace on the regional and international level. The Prime Minister reviewed with the audience regional and global developments, where he emphasized the importance of economic and political cooperation, which would enable the Arabian Gulf to compete internationally, particularly in the light of its economic qualifications and investment opportunities.
His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Fis Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa received at Ghadaybiya Palace today former Secretary General of the Arab League Amr Musa, who is currently visiting the kingdom. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister praised the strategic role of Egypt on both regional and international levels. He highlighted the Bahraini Egyptian bilateral relations, hailing the development of their joint cooperation at all levels. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister also expressed appreciation to the role of the former Secretary in developing Arab joint cooperation and his continuous support as an Arab politician to Arab affairs. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa chaired the weekly cabinet meeting today at Ghadaybiya Palace. The Prime Minister hailed the results of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa's visit to the United Kingdom, noting the meetings and talks held between him and Queen Elizabeth II of the United Kingdom and Northern Ireland and the British Prime Minister Theresa May. The talks embodied the depth of the ties between the two countries and enhanced cooperation between them. The cabinet commended the bilateral historical ties, which this year marks the 200th anniversary between the two countries, expressing keenness in enhancing bilateral cooperation in various fields. His Royal Highness expressed thanks for the citizens' good feelings about his grant of the Grand Star and Gold of the Australian, or Austrian Order of Merit conferred upon him by the Habsburg Royal Family and Hollabrunn City Council in Austria. The cabinet condemned the criminal act of targeting Mecca conducted by the rebel militias in Yemen, urging to adopt a unified and firm Islamic position against those who acted out this act. It also or carried out this act. It also expresses support to all the efforts of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia in combating all forms of terrorism. His Royal Highness gave orders of adopting a comprehensive vision in planning new cities, taking into account the provisions of parks and entertainment landmarks that will act as outlets for the residents. He also directed to maintain the social fabric in the residential projects constructed in villages. His Royal Highness continued to fulfill the needs of the residents of Dumistan from the Luzi residential project and to allocate residential units for Tubli residents from the Tubli residential projects. He also directed the Ministry of Housing to expedite the allocation of residential units to residents of Bilad al-Qadim and al-Zinj. The cabinet directed to limit the participation of the ministers in international events to those that that bring practical benefits to the kingdom in order to rationalize government spending and to optimize benefiting from international events. The Prime Minister praised the results that the students and schools participating in the Arab Reading Challenge Champ competition held in the United Arab Emirates recently achieved, thanking the winners for their efforts in reaching such top positions. The Cabinet approved the Plan of Energy Consumption Rationalization and Benefiting from Renewable Energy and referred it to the Ministerial Committee for Urbanization and Infrastructure. The Cabinet approved a draft law regarding the ratification of a protocol between the Bahraini and Turkish governments to amend and update some of the principles in the agreement signed between them in October 26, 1998 regarding air services. The cabinet approved an agreement on the avoidance of double taxation between Bahrain and the Kingdom of Spain. The cabinet approved amending a draft law regarding mental health. The cabinet approved the scheduled project for cooperation between Bahrain and the United Arab Emirates in the field of youth for the period from 2016 to 2018. The Cabinet reviewed four proposals by the Representative Council regarding the new housing projects, infrastructure, social housing program, age restriction municipalities, and a final examination for the school year. Under the patronage of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, the seventh edition of the annual conference on effective partnership and information sharing for better humanitarian action was inaugurated in participation with the United Nations Office for the Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs, the OCHA, and the Organization of Islamic Cooperation Humanitarian Funds, the OIC. HF, as well as the Royal Charity Organization. The representative of His Majesty the King for Charity Works and Youth Affairs Chairman of the Board of Trustees of RCO, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, delivered a speech in which he affirmed Bahrain's keenness in providing support in all forms and bolstering global humanitarian efforts, as well as the aid of humanitarian organizations, which is based on the teaching and principles of Islam and the humanitarian bonds that ties the Kingdom of Bahrain with the rest of the world. 
His Highness also conveyed the greetings of His Majesty the King, the Honorary Chairman of the RCO, and his wishes for the success of this conference. His Highness Sheikh Nasser addressed his deep appreciation towards the OCHA, the RCO, and the OICHF for their generous efforts in organizing this event in a time of the world experiencing upheavals for many nations. He also valued the role of the United Nations and its different organs to coordinate and unify humanitarian efforts, which resulted in creating channels through which aid can be delivered. His Highness lauded the distinguished presence of the participants from various countries, asserting the responsibilities of the public, private, and the civil society's institutions in upholding their role of contributions in order to ease the struggles of the nations, whether from natural disasters, internal conflicts, or wars. He also presented his award to Kuwait Samir D1 advisor, the UN Secretary Envoy for Humanitarian Affairs, Dr. Abdullah Matug, in appreciation for his efforts in the areas of charity and humanitarian work. The United Nations Under Secretary General for Humanitarian Affairs and Emergency Relief Coordinator, Stephen O'Brien, presented His Highness Sheikh Nasser an appreciation award for his worldwide charity work, aiding the unfortunate. Malak Al Shouli, a refugee in Zaatari refugee camp and student in Bahrain Scientific Complex, talked about her experience studying in Bahrain schools and highlighted the role of these schools in raising her hopes of obtaining good education. This conference, actually, there is a lot of people who are counting on uh, its resolutions. Uh, at the moment of maximum crisis in the region, there is a high need to coordinate uh, the collaboration between the uh, donor uh, group and organization who are also delivering humanitarian aid. Uh, this, is, this will actually maximize the effectiveness uh, of humanitarian work. Uh, I uh, cannot uh, overemphasize also the importance of exchange of information uh, and avoidance of any duplication of work. Uh, this will actually probably reach more uh, groups of people who are in high need. The second that I would love this conference to uh, come out with is uh, we have to also uh, go uh, away from the traditional ways of delivering aid. I think the time has come for the GCC countries to invest more in innovative and creative ways uh, uh, in, in, in relief and humanitarian work. I think this will maximize the efficiency and also we will uh, reach in a more scientific way. Uh, last but not least, I think it's also time that we have scientists, we have research, we have universities. We should probably direct them to translational research in, in humanitarian and relief work. We should support uh, researchers to uh, come up with resolutions to uh, bring better ways to alleviate the sufferings of a human being. And this will be also coupled with investing in the youth uh, in the volunteer work. The uh, priorities of need are not limited to food. Uh, the priority of need are 
goes beyond uh, food. It goes to a better health system, uh, better also uh, education, uh, better uh, to support families to uh, stand on their feet. I think education, we should be more in the innovative way of, uh, for example, uh, tele-education. And even in the health, we should probably maximize the benefit by uh, investing more in newer uh, innovative ways to deliver health to those who are in need, and this will maximize the benefit. So, of course, there's 130 million people that need um, humanitarian assistance, uh, 60 million who are displaced, whether internally or externally. Many of them actually uh, lose, as you said, education. So they lose three, four years as they are being displaced from village to village to village until they actually leave their own country. Because people don't leave their country immediately. They actually try to stay in the country. And so, yes, you find children who have three or four years of lack of education. And you have issues with educational departments in countries where they're not allowing these kids to join the formal educational system. And if they join the informal educational system, it is not actually acknowledged abroad. And so this is one of the biggest issues. And I think what Dr. Rabia was talking about tele-education is really important as long as it's certified and acknowledged. This is where the change happens. On behalf of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Salman Al Khalifa today visited the Gajriya Kualarma Bahita Asarpota Haridas Ajay and Sharma families to mark the festival of Diwali. His Highness extended the greetings of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince to the families and his appreciation for the family's important contribution to the kingdom's economy. During the visit, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed noted His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa's commitment to enshrining moderation, tolerance and pluralism within the kingdom. He added that these values have contributed to shaping an open and a multicultural environment which continues to promote cultural awareness and respect of universal values. He also added that the moderation and tolerance are two important values that have been upheld by Islam and the Bahrain's long-established multicultural and diverse society continues to foster religious and cultural understanding. His Highness extended his best wishes to the families, emphasizing that the kingdom celebrates its diversity as a source of strength and that this diversity is embodied in citizens' and resident commitment to developing Bahrain together. He went on to wish all Bahraini citizens and residents peace and prosperity under the leadership of His Majesty the King. For their part, the family celebrating Diwali expressed their gratitude for His Highness Sheikh Mohammed's visit and expressed appreciation for the continued support of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince. The families also welcomed the kingdom's cultural openness and long-standing support for religious rights. The Arabian Gulf Security One exercise hosted for the first time in the Kingdom of Bahrain in the model village continued for the second day in the presence of heads of GCC delegations. The supporting centers at the model village play a vital role, such as the medical clinic, which has been equipped with medical tools and provided with technical personnel, as well as experienced medical teams from the participating Gulf forces. The clinic has eight ambulances in the unlikely case of injuries, as well as medical evacuation aircraft provided by the Interior Ministry's police aviation. The organizing committee under the direct supervision of the Interior Minister, Lieutenant General Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, was keen on preparing the administrative unit in a way that consists with the goal of the exercise throughout its phases.